and that um, a scapegoat group is tried to uh, be blamed, be it refugees, um, Muslims, mm. um, the other, right? Um, you see, there's nothing in fascism that says it has to be about the Jews. Um, and so there's this, like what you identified there was some of the the, the e enemy, the external enemy that we try to unite the nation around to protect the nation seems to be common characteristics of what's happening in India. Um, socialists are very careful about how we use the word fascist. Do we call a policeman a fascist? No, we don't, Diego, right? <laughs> He's a cop, <laughs> right? Cops are, you know, they can be members of uh, fascist parties, but there's a very specific thing what fascism is and what a right wing uh, government is. Mm -hmm. right? There's a difference. John Key, is John Key a fascist? No, he's not because we're having this meeting in a union hall that has not been made illegal yet. But fascism will make unions illegal. Mm -hmm. On the 2nd of May, 1933, every union hall in Germany was raided and smashed, and all the leaders were taken to concentration camps. First, because that's what fascism does. Fascism, in, 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 in the end, is not a movement against Jews. It's not a movement against black people or, or Muslims. Fascism is a movement which seeks to destroy uh, all working class organization and all organizations that are independent of the state. And it believes in total state control of every aspect of life. Okay? To smash any working class opposition to it so that the ruling class can, can, can force capitalism to survive in, in periods of crisis or in periods where it's threatened, right? Why has an extreme right-wing movement uh, risen in India and is it fascist, right? There is no doubt in my mind that groups like Shev Sina, mm -hmm. which were led by Thackeray, are fascist organizations. If you've seen the beginning of Slumdog Millionaire, mm -hmm. with a little kid running for his life from a pogrom, right? The gangs behind that are fascist gangs who believe that every Muslim Indian should be exterminated and killed, right? And that is very real danger for um, people who live where these groups are operating. Um, and Thackeray himself, the founder of Shiv Sina, was a Hitler worshipper. Yeah. You know, he had pictures of Hitler in his office. He, they had Mein Kampf and Sale Party rallies, mm -hmm. a fascist organization mm -hmm. which wanted to build up militias to kill Muslims, but not only Muslims, communists, right? Because the real enemy was working class organization, and it had its class basis in the middle class, right? Fascism is not a movement in the working class. Uh, if you look at the votes uh, in working class areas in Germany, when Hitler comes to power at that 33% figure, he only scored a vote of 15% in the working class, and it was the middle class and most the unemployed who voted for, um, for Hitler. So there are some characteristics, definitely, with groups like Shiv Sina and the RSS, where Modi, the new leader of India, has its history, has its organizational uh, 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 roots in the RSS, right? So these uh, extreme right wing and fascist people, they exist in India. They are partners and friends of um, the BJP. But is the BJP itself a classical fascist organization in India? Not yet, right? Why? Because we haven't seen the main uh, unions illegal, communist parties illegal, close them down, um, or close down the universities. No, no, no. So they, there's a sedition charge on the okay, okay, I'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, but it's not yet, right? So that's why the struggle for democracy and this stuff against seditionism and the, the, the nation state and stuff is so important. And it's so important that we use the correct terminology in order to win people to the side to defend what remains of that space uh, in, in, in India. And that's why I want to talk about some of the failings, I think, of the political traditions in India, right? I mean, the first political tradition that most people would be kind of, a, kind of au fair with is kind of the tradition that was represented by Gandhi, which was a form of Indian nationalism that you know, came around the INC, the Indian National yeah, Congress, like the right. African National yeah. Congress, like Sinn Féin in Ireland, right? These were nationalist revolutionary movements who wanted uh, you know, an end to British imperialism. But within that, uh, the nation, nationalism, you had an alliance of classes. The rich and the poor, we're all Indians together, you know, with the wheel, <laughs> you know, doing the work. 
uh, you get independence, what do you find now? We've got our own rich people, thank you very much. We'll develop the big Silicon Valley and blah, 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 wherever it is. And we've got people living in the slums, still in the 21st century, suffering the bubonic plague. Oh, right. um, now, this is what's happened with every national movement. Look at South Africa, 20 years after apartheid, the ANC have millionaires, billionaires, so, you know, past communists who are in the movement, now own the McDonald's franchise in India, right? Um, so this seems to be a common characteristic that the imperialist national struggles, that the, uh, when you get rid of empire, so cult, mm -hmm. right, then you form your own ruling class, um, which is corrupt, and which earns the contempt of the working class, right? And that's what's happening in Ireland at the minute, right? We hate our own Irish guys. It's not about the Brits, but you guys, after independence. So Congress and that tradition is identified by a lot of people as crony capitalism, right? And they need the power to sweep it away, mm -hmm. right? Now, shouldn't have that power been communists? Shouldn't that power have been socialists? And if not, why not, right? And that's why it's interesting, some of the things that you're uh, talking about, Barry, in that a lot of the uh, leadership of the communist parties in India looked for their ideological influence elsewhere, mm -hmm. uh, be it Russia or China, uh, looking for a model of already existing socialism that could be applied to India or pointing out a country going, see, look at these guys, aren't they doing well? Let's do it here. And you mentioned two states, I think uh, uh, West uh, Bengal, is it? And uh, Kerala. 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 And Kerala, Kerala. 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 right? Kerala. Where there were two um, governments, you know, uh, Communist Party governments of a different part, two different parties, third movement, which we talked about. But in both those countries, uh, or both those states, sorry, you know, there was an attempt, and I think there was an attempt to foster state capitalism, right? That the state was trying to develop the economy, blah, blah, blah. But when teachers went on strike, you're on strike against the communist state, therefore you're petty bourgeois and you're the enemy, blah, 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 right? And so you have workers on strike today in Vietnam. I don't know what kind of state Vietnam is. Anyone's got a red flag with a yellow star in it, but if you're a worker, you go on strike, you get a fucking policeman to crack across the head, right? Which side are you on? I'm on the side of the worker in the Samsung factory, right? And similarly, I think in both those states it was an attempt to build, you know, to develop uh, um, a fair economy, if you want, but through capitalist means, right? And you know, Lenin, you know, at one stage in Russia, you know, they felt that the only thing that they were forced to do was develop capitalism, you know, through the state. So he actually refers to state capitalism as a, as a kind of thing, right? But this means that. Um, both those governments have actually, um, you know, fallen, mm. and uh, the working class was disenchanted by their experience of the uh, of those governments in power. Right? And so, um, you know, we talked about the, the evolution we want, or the revolution <laughs> we want, right? I was happy to see the uh, farmers in the Punjab, yeah. you know, marching, striking. They're not trying to take the government; mm. they're trying to fight the government, mm. right? And, and that seems to be, um, you know, there's a return of struggle. There's a return of working class struggle in India. The two biggest strikes we've seen in human history in the last 10 years, both have happened in India, right? Involving 100 million workers in strike. You talk about the railway economy. I was thinking about those massive railway strikes that we saw throughout India, an inspiration for workers in all countries. Right? So we've got a massive working class force but I think the weakness on the left, because we must understand, why is the left one mm. strong? Why are the fascists rising? Why are, you know, I think it's because some of the models that they looked to were either state capitalists or that they were uh, this, you know, we've got to reform the system mm. rather than fight it, right? And I think today most people would think that the major communist parties in India are reformist in nature, similar to mm. labor parties, I suppose. Uh, in the European context, yeah. Um, so look, um, what, when faced with fascism, what should we do, right? And there's a number of different strategies people have to fight fascism. I mean, one strategy is um, to, uh, you know, fight it physically with street gangs, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, well, there's no doubt that um, self-defense is necessary, right? When you see those pogroms, when people come to attack, 
I mean, there's, there's no doubt that we need to defend ourselves against the fascist threat. And that's what's interesting to see the students at the minute in the universities are rising up to defend freedom of speech, do you know what I mean, and to defend themselves against attack from these right wing groups. You know, it's very good. But, but how do we do that? It, and I think the interesting thing to look at from the European context, not to be Eurocentric, but to, be, to see the dangers of um, failed strategies uh, for the left in fighting fascism. I mean, the one dangerous, the most dangerous one is to repeat what happened in, in, in Germany or Italy, right, where we didn't actually stop fascism, even though um, the working class and its parties uh, were, were much bigger than the fascists and had much power, more power than the fascists, right? But there was a uh, uh, most of the communists, the so-called revolutionary workers at that time followed Stalin, and Stalin thought that the main enemy were the social democrats with the Labour Party uh, equivalent, you know, who betrayed the revolution in 1918, we've got the Rosa Luxemburg here in 1919, you know, there's no doubt they did the dirty work and stabilised the system um, of capitalism. Um, but in 1933, I think it was necessary that the left, at that time, revolutionary or reformist, um, put, not put aside those differences, but actually struck together, right? You need to have a united front against fascism.